Hey guys, Journey John here, and welcome to Crisis Remastered. Uh, so we're playing this on a Ryzen 2700X, a 1080 Ti with 16 gigs of RAM and an NVMe SSD. So kind of give you all an idea of what kind of performance you can expect. Um, I'd say if you're running a 1660 Ti, um, at 1080p, you'll probably see uh, similar results to this one if you're using similar graphics settings. We're running at 2560 by 1440 uh, with a G-Sync monitor. So we can go above or below 60 FPS without experiencing things like micro stuttering and screen tearing, um, which you will see uh, in the video probably at some point. You'll see some screen tearing, but that's just more because we're recording at 60 FPS. So Par for the course is how it goes. So the performance here is actually, um, if I remember correctly, it's it's I believe it's a lot better than it was in the original game, especially in those like snowy areas. Um, the lighting and stuff really like took a hit uh, to FPS, trying to like do all the shadows and the highlights and whatnot. So we got a new gun, this little alien looking gun, it's basically like a mini gun but it's got infinite ammo. And we also have a gauss rifle, uh, which makes things really fun. We're also fighting aliens now, so this is actually the second to last mission in the Crisis Remaster. Um, what's odd is, it's technically the third to last mission in the, in the, like, the original game. But they took out a mission between this and the, the final mission where you're flying a VTOL and trying to escape out to the uh, the aircraft carrier that you'll be on for the final final boss fight. <laughs> but um, another interesting thing about the game in, in general is that once you get past the the first couple of levels and you get to this alien section of the game the game actually becomes a lot more linear whereas probably two-thirds of the game are more like open sandbox where you're fighting uh, the KPA other human AI or NPCs and so for this one they just kind of speed up the pace and it becomes a little bit more cinematic almost especially this mission and the final mission um, and also, also the mission where you're on the ship. So it's, it, it's like a, almost a change in game design. But, you know, it's, it's a change of pace as well, so it's kind of right, nice. Moving down the valley, now! Everybody out! Let's go! Let's go! But the area that we came out of was like completely frozen like this area. And so from here you're going to transition more into like the the foresty area that you're familiar with from the first part of the game so that big sphere that big sphere that we came out of it's going to spread as the story continues and take over more and more of the island um, there's a little weird bug that you just saw there with the gunner position and the vehicle so you can usually fix that by switching to the driver's seat um, and then switching back to the counter position, but since Psy uh, not Psycho, Prophet is driving right now, we're not able to switch, so we're stuck in the third person, so we can't switch to first person without having that bug affect us. It happens if you ADS, and even if you start shooting, it'll switch you to that camera angle. So it's not, not super great. Hopefully they fix that in a patch. But I love, like, all the different particle effects and stuff, all the different explosions and things. This game has some of the best explosions. I think the physics from that vehicle bugged out a little bit. <laughs> it got much, probably a little further than it was supposed to, but it worked out. Another interesting thing is that the, the aliens in the first game, um, are way different from the aliens that you fight in Crisis 2 and 3. You don't see anything like this in the second and third game. Um, they're, they're way more humanoid in the, in the next games. Somebody get me 
you see some like uh tripods or like something more akin to like war of the world style of alien um but they're mixed in with like just your normal like combat units and stuff I kind of miss the design of these guys um, and it, if you play Crisis Warhead where you actually uh, play a psycho instead of nomad you end up fighting a lot more of these dudes and they have they have more variety there's ones that like create shields for your their allies and stuff so there's a lot more types of aliens and there's also like more weapons there's like a grenade launcher. I think you can dual wield SMGs in that game. It does some really cool stuff. It's it's a pretty good game. Uh, it would be nice if they remastered that game as well, but probably probably not gonna happen. And it actually was um, better optimized as well. They they improved the engine for Crisis Warhead over uh, the original game. So yeah, you can see here, we're, we're actually sitting in like 70s or 80s, so um, even with like the LOD in the background, uh, the long distance kind of, I mean, we're looking up in the sky right now, so that helps. And uh, we also died, so that doesn't help as much, um, but the performance here is pretty, pretty solid. Um, you'll occasionally see drops into like the upper 40s, um, but... You, you sit usually around 60 FPS. It's not, I wouldn't say it's super consistent, but it does pretty well. Um, and at the end of the video, we'll uh, actually take a look at the actual settings that we're using. Um, I did change one setting since recording this. Uh, we changed the vegetation, it was high. I changed it to medium to kind of lower the LOD a little bit to give you like probably an additional like four or five fps on average i think maybe even just like two or three <laughs> depending on where you are but uh you'll see like these tornadoes and stuff in the background that's from the uh the difference i guess in temperature from that extremely cold sphere that's expanding out it's freezing everything within it and then it's conflicting with the like natural climate so it's causing all these tornadoes to be everywhere it's a really cool effect i don't think the tornadoes look quite as good as they do in uh i think just cause 4 had really cool tornadoes that had like actual physics associated with them um, but you know that game didn't come out in 2007 so little AA uh, vehicle it's actually you're supposed to use this to take out those dudes that were flying around earlier but I thought I'd try using it on this big boy over here unfortunately he's got an energy shield so you can't actually do anything to him but uh, you know these rockets look really cool so what are you gonna do man and we're dead <laughs> So let's try that again and uh, try not to get killed this time. But I, I do like the, the particle effects and the smoke. This game always, always had really good explosions. I think it's the same explosion that you have from like, there will be scenes earlier in the game where you'll see like planes fly by and drop like bombs on things. I think it's, it's a very similar kind of animation style. It's not going down. They look so cool, man. Pull back. Pull back. So yeah, we're at, we're just under 50 FPS here. Which, you know, isn't bad. It's, it's respectable. You would hope for better. Um, I'm sure there's definitely some optimization they could do, especially on like the CPU front. Keep the pressure on. 
but uh, I did if you lower the model settings I highly recommend at least lowering the model settings because um, if you're if you're doing testing and trying to optimize your game uh, check to make sure that you're getting 100% usage on your GPU um, I had to lower the model settings to medium because before I did that uh, CPU usage was sitting about or uh, GPU usage was sitting about like 70% um, in like certain areas so once I lowered the model settings it uh, kind of helped out because it's got a CPU bottleneck essentially is what's happening and so once I lowered it it was able to fully utilize the GPU and get you some extra FPS and stuff but yeah you can check that if you pull up task manager and look at performance statistics I'm wanting to upgrade to the 3080 and then I'd like to go back and test this game out and do like see what it's like with ray tracing and stuff but I need to upgrade my CPU first because that's going to be an even worse bottleneck um, if you have like a 3700X you're probably okay or like the 3000 Ryzen series or pretty much any Intel GPU but um, the first and second gen Ryzen were they were good but they're not like ideal for gaming yeah I really really like the design of these like alien like unit things I don't know I can't even, don't even know what the name of this thing is but it looks really really dope And I really like vehicles. I like I like games that mix like first person gameplay with like vehicle gameplay. So I really like Crisis for instance. You have vehicles, you got uh, the Jeep familiar, this AA emplacement, uh, you have like tanks that you can drive around for a few missions. And in the original one you have that VTOL as well. Um, but that's that's also one of the reasons I really like Halo and uh, like Battlefield as well. That's, that's why I like Battlefield over COD. <laughs> it's more of a sandbox kind of experience with vehicles. Yeah, in the original game, you'd be getting on this VTOL, and the next mission, you'd actually be flying it around and escaping. And you'd be flying through a bunch of, like, tornadoes and stuff. And shooting down a bunch of these aliens. It's a fun mission. I'm pretty sad that it was not in this game. The guy's hat says torpedo. <coughs> and you can see his face there. It's not really shaded properly it doesn't it doesn't have subsurface scattering where like light captures and it like refracts refracts throughout the skin or reflects and the skin tone isn't exactly correct and uh he's no longer with us <laughs> that alien is very very angry but uh we'll get revenge on it later so don't worry about that too much but yeah i hope you all enjoyed this video we're gonna take a quick look at the settings uh make sure to drop a like uh let me know i'm curious to see if anybody's playing this on a console and what their experience has been there or if you played the original game in the remaster and what you think of it so far so we're playing at 1440p uh with sma one times whatever and then basically medium high settings. Uh, if you have your shaders at medium, you're not able to turn on ray tracing quality. And I don't play with motion blur. So that's pretty much it. Hope you all had a good one. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye bye. See ya.